What the hell are we going to open with today? I realized last week that I didn't say anything about the Celtics winning the NBA Finals. <laughs> we did it! It's a surreal feeling. We did it. We did it! How the fuck would you show me? Buddy's trying to be like Kevin Garnett. Oh man, this is going to be a short one. Oh Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, <laughs> we're bringing this to you live. How's that for a cold open? Everyone, this is episode 108 of Hoagies and Pierogies. I almost said 107. Do I have CTE? Live from central Pennsylvania with your host, Ian DiCarlo, this is Hoagies and Pierogies. The ski stash! The ski stash! Welcome to the Big Ten. Major's going drink, mate. Let's go. All right, everyone. Since I already mentioned that the Celtics uh, won the NBA championship, we're going to go past baseball for now because there's like nothing football related that's happened in the past week. So <laughs> we're going to start with some hockey. The Oilers forced game seven after being down 3-0. This is the 10th time it has happened in a best of seven playoff series, just in NHL, but only the third time in the Stanley Cup Finals. In 1942, the Toronto Maple Leafs became the only team in North American pro sports to overcome a 3-0 deficit in a championship uh, series, a feat that still stands today, unfortunately. (laughs) They blew it. Who cares? I think it would be hilarious if they lost the Stanley Cup in the ocean and it's just floating out in the middle of nowhere like rum ham. But yeah, the Toronto Maple Leafs are still the only team, not even in, <laughs> not even from the United States, just North American in general, to come back from down 3-0. So when the Maple Leafs came back 3-0, they did it against the Red Wings. The Detroit Red Wings tried to do the same thing to the Maple Leafs three years later uh, in 1945. But after forcing the Game 7 being down 3-0, they couldn't close it out, just like the Oilers. Not even anything for college football. Are you kidding me? God, there is nothing going on. (laughs) But we're two weeks away. Just two weeks away from and Sorry, not NCAA. CFB 25. I am looking forward to it so much. So, yeah, no college football news. Obviously, it's the middle of summer. Actually, the start of summer, technically. This was a huge move, and another player that the Patriots uh, are keeping, he's a homegrown talent, Patriots re-sign Ramondre Stevenson to a four-year, $36 million contract. Running backs are cheap. Dude, Saquon Barkley got three years, $36 million. So this is even less. Uh, with incentives... He, uh, with incentives, he can bump it up to uh, forty-eight million dollars over the four years, but he has to reach sixteen hundred scrimmage yards, uh, uh, two thousand twenty-five through two thousand twenty-seven, with no incentives in two thousand twenty-four. They're kind of expecting a lot out of him uh, when he has already showed signs of wear last year, uh, and he got rid of Zeke. But you bring in Antonio Gibson. I mean, yeah. The Ravens introduced their purple helmet. Uh, That was two weeks ago. I didn't include that in the episode last week. But yeah, besides that, a whole lot of fucking nothing. Damn. I should have left the HBO segment for this week. (laughs) And that's it for the sports outside of baseball, too. I mean, now that hockey's over and basketball's over, there's really going to be nothing going on. J.J. Redick is the head coach of the Lakers now, and he has to stop his podcast with LeBron. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) There's really just 
Oh, this is dry, and it is fucking dry outside. Jesus Christ, it's hot out there. Okay, to baseball. First things first, MLB will be fully implementing the uh, ABS challenge system to AAA this week. I believe in the second half of the week, it was the challenge system, but in the first, or no, I don't know, whichever one it was, in one half of the week, it was different than the second half of the week. You had the automatic balls and strikes, which were just called strikes and balls by a robot. But this one, the ABS challenge system is the one that Skeens likes. <laughs> so the umpire still has judgment in this case, but then you can challenge his call with the ABS system. So if the ABS system says it's a uh, ball or strike, then that's that's it. It's just like tennis, exactly the same thing as tennis. I've said this at this point, not hundreds of times. There's only 100 episodes. <laughs> I've said it tens of times on this podcast that the uh, tennis challenge technology should be implemented. And here it is being introduced to AAA. So this almost guarantees this is what it'll be uh, coming to MLB, hopefully in 2025, and if not, definitely by 2026. It adds such a unique element to the game that will only lead to more harassment of the umpires, which I love. All right, the Pirates. We got the Pirates. The Pirates, and this was the only sponsorship that made sense, are now sponsored by Sheets. God, I love the uh, MTO first base tweet from North Shore 9, picking out which first baseman they want to add during the trade deadline, which we've gotten conflicting reports on that. Now, only if they could get some offense MTO, that would be great. Uh, it's It's been a disappointing a week since we last recorded. Falter is having a rough stretch, and a measly 14 runs were scored in this homestand against the Reds and Rays. Uh, you have to add something. You have to fucking do anything, literally anything. So the game on Tuesday night uh, last week, the night I recorded, was Falter's third straight loss. Lodola went seven innings pitched, four hits, one and run, eight Ks. <laughs> and actually, Falter didn't do bad at all here. Falter had a great game here. Seven innings pitched. Seven hits, that's meh. Only two earned runs, three Ks, and two walks. He's not going to strike out too many people. He's a soft contact-inducing lefty. So that was not not bad at all. They lost the game 2-1, to one, though. This is where the offense needs to come into play. But then Keller continued to shine. Oh, my God. Even in a game where Hunter Green went 6.1 innings pitched, allowing just two hits with nine strikeouts and no runs, Keller outdueled him and went seven innings pitched with two hits, two walks, and seven strikeouts. Uh, they won the game on a late Reynolds home run, who I believe now sits at a 21-game hitting streak. <laughs> so Reynolds isn't the problem. June is Reynolds' month. That's for damn sure. So they won that Keller game one to nothing. Still, you need more offense. You're, you can't count on Keller to do that every single time, although he has been extremely consistent, and I believe he's – one or two uh, starts of five innings pitched away from tying or breaking A.J. Burnett's record with the Pirates. So that's really cool. <sighs> and then the Rays series. Ugh. Chalk this series up to complete front office incompetence. Nothing much going uh, on in the Friday game against the Rays. You would think that you would do anything possible to not have a bullpen game be the first of the uh, weekend at home. But I guess not, and it backfired on them. Good. Fuck them. They lost that game 10-3. to Lodzinski was in the game for, uh, let's see here. By the way, the internet is a lot better this week, and the episode on YouTube did end up going out on Friday. <laughs> but yeah, Mlodzinski only made it 1.2 innings pitched. Uh, four hits led up against him. With one earned run, I mean, but he was at 40 pitches. That's a lot for him. And then Luis Ortiz came in. 10 hits allowed in four innings. Good for six earned runs. Ah, seven, got him, took him 79 pitches to get through those four innings. And then I see Dalton Jeffries came in this game too and let up three runs. What are we doing? What the fuck are we doing? These are scraps. Absolute scraps from teams that don't need them. And it, ah, 
So that was bad. But then a bounce back start from Jones for his uh, ninth quality start this year with an Allegheny blast from Cruz feels good, man. Yeah, that feels awesome. <laughs> and I really like that they are wearing the uh, City Connect jerseys with the white pants. I do like it a lot better with the white pants rather than the uh, the black pants. But Jones, seven innings pitched, eight strikeouts, two earned runs. Yes. Fuck yeah. They let him go 94 pitches. His ERA is down to 3.66. Another thing on the list of things you love to see. Check. <laughs> in that game, uh, Greg Brown just referred to Yandy Diaz and Aroldis Chapman as Cuban defectors. I find it odd that we call people who make it over from Cuba on a dinghy Cuban defectors and not illegal immigrants. <laughs> Chapman actually came in and closed that game, and he was facing all righties. Immediately, I said, what the fuck is Shelton doing? This is a Shelton hate episode. What what the fuck is he doing? Yeah, you let Holderman go in the eighth inning, kind of when he need him, needed him. Like, that's his usual spot. But then out of nowhere, with no explanation from anyone, Chapman comes into the game instead of David Bedner. <sighs> Sheldon said Bedner was not available for the game due to left side tightness. And of course, Sheldon abused the fuck out of him at the beginning of last year, and he hasn't been the same since. It's a damn shame. <sighs> there is no, no indication of this at all. Zero. If he wasn't available... You have to... I mean, he was just put on the IL, so... Uh, that is so fucking frustrating. And he said it like the day after, too. So they did win that game 4-3. to three. It was a lot... It was really close on Saturday. And then the scheme started on Sunday. Let's go, baby! And they... Greg Block, or uh, Joe Block with a great call, though. Mr. Jackson, Paul Skeens is for real. 102 on his final pitch of the day. <laughs> After Skeens struck out Alex Jackson with 102 miles an hour on his 98th pitch to end the seventh inning. And then Holderman came in. And what does he do in front of his, all of his ha family and the charity that he represents? Completely blows it in the eighth inning to ruin Skeens' day. And you know what? He didn't ruin it. Bob Nutting ruined it. Every single time it feels like this team is clicking, you realize that they literally don't have the depth to win three games in a row because the team expends so much of their energy to try to win the first two games of a series. They better add at the deadline. There is no urgency to put a winning product on the field from either Charrington or Nutting since Neil Huntington left. Ooh, we want to we wanna make sure that we build up and we can compete for years. I don't fucking care. Win one World Series, the team will be happy. The fans will be happy for another 10 years. It does not matter. Trade away your fucking prospects. Termar Johnson is in 222, 384, 371 slash line in A, A plus, high A, Greensboro. And someone would try to was like, oh, well, yeah, oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. Go fuck yourself. Termar Johnson needs to be on the trading block. Hunter Barco can go. And then I think it was uh, Lonnie White Jr. To the White Sox for Luis Robert. I will drive down to Greensboro, drive them up to Chicago, and drive Luis Robert back to Pittsburgh. I'll do it. God damn it. Most of the good players on the roster are still from the Neil Huntington era. Charrington should get no praise for taking Skeens. That was a no-brainer. How about Henry Davis? How about Termar Johnson? Just garbage picks. Charrington needs to go if they don't start winning now. Not soon. Now. Zero reason. Year five of the rebuild. It should have been a bridge rebuild. It should have taken three years to compete. It also doesn't help when Shelton sits three out of your top five best hitters going for a series win. I understand he has to work with what he's given, but he's managing this team like they're the Dodgers. No reason to give guys at-bats for the sake of giving them at-bats. These guys are paid to play the damn game. No one besides maybe Kutch needs days off as frequently as these players are getting them. It's ridiculous. 
half the team isn't even going to get to 140 games. Now back at the Reds. This game on Monday, the night I almost forgot my lava queso burger at Red Robin, was Falter's fourth straight loss. And this one, uh, you can put a little bit of the blame on him. But you can't really put the blame on the offense other than Nick Gonzalez, who went over five. Five runs should almost always win you the game. Dalton Jeffrey then came in after Justin Bruel and Dennis Santana and blew the game wide open for the Reds after he allowed four runs on four hits. God. Almost like zero, zero positives, except for Reynolds extending his uh, on base, his hit streak to 21 games, I believe. Cruz hit another home run. That's also extremely positive. What's that for him on the uh, on the season? That was his 11th home run on the season. Okay. Nothing compared to Gunnar Henderson, who hit his 25th home run today. Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's ridiculous. But McCutcheon did become one of 12 players in history to have 2,000-plus hits, 400-plus doubles, 50-plus triples, 300-plus home runs, and 200-plus stolen bases. God, I I love Kutch, and I hope he spends the rest of his years here in Pittsburgh. I I truly think he'd just retire if they don't sign him next year. I, I really think he would. I don't think he wants to move again. He wants to stay in Pittsburgh, for sure. And that's another thing. Fucking Carlos Santana wanted to be a pirate this year, and he's going off for Minnesota. Why did you not re-sign Carlos Santana? A switch hitting first baseman that is extremely <laughs> having an extremely good offensive season. So likable. Everyone loved him. Why did you get rid of him? Why did you not sign him? Oh my god. He wanted he would have came back on a discount. But they didn't even extend a contract to him. So just mad at the Pirates this week. <sighs> All right, let's scroll Twitter because the game did start almost half an hour ago. Well, we have another stadium deal here. Uh, bu- 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 the Jaguars signed an agreement on a groundbreaking stadium of the future deal that is set to transform downtown and its surrounding areas. Dude, Jacksonville needs a new stadium, let's be honest. <laughs> Save as Jaguars Stadium. Get a little behind the scenes here. I just take the picture straight from Twitter. <laughs> okay, like I said, the Pirates game started. And Brian Reynolds extends his hit streak to 22 games with a, this says here by Alex Stumpf, a, an absolute moonshot. Oh, <laughs> let's go. Pirates get an early 2-0 lead with Mitch Keller on the mound. Another thing on the list of things that you love to see. Check. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah he smacked that i mean that's gone in any stadium not just great american ballpark <laughs> wow <laughs> clobbered that thing reynolds said hot tool and spin on that thing <laughs> and guess who he drove in kutch fuck yeah and then here oh jesus christ rowdy Tellez stole a base and then scored on a nick gonzalez single on the next pitch okay with another person saying the rowdy steal and then scoring from second was one of the most electric things I've ever seen. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Pirates are up three to nothing. This is, oh my God. <laughs> no MLB team has ever allowed Rowdy to to seal a base and then win. <laughs> he did it in 2019, one with the Blue Jays against the Orioles, and then did it twice last year. <laughs> and Brewers beat the Reds in the first game and then beat the Giants in the second game. <laughs> what an odd stat. Teams are three and zero when Rowdy Tellez steals a base. <laughs> oh, look at him fucking saunter over to second base! Wow. <laughs> they must have picked up something to know that when Hunter Green throws over, there could be something that they've seen. Oh, and Hunter Green just barfed on the mound. Oh my god! I'm <laughs> like, whoa! Oh my god! On his 21 game hit streak. But lifetime against Green, he's one for eight. The one hit is a single. Holy shit, that was a lot of puke. Right after the pitch. Oh my god. 
<laughs> Dude, that might be... Oh, that's a good one. That's a good puke. <laughs> Holy shit. Man, this one... This one scrolling Twitter post game gave us some gold. <laughs> oh man, that was nasty. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right, cool. Too much good has happened in this game for the Pirates to lose. Knock on wood. Jesus, I, I just jinxed them hard. <laughs> well, they're up three to nothing now. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see when this comes out. <laughs> oh God. Well, not when this comes out. We'll see when this uh, when the game ends if. I was proven wrong or not. It'll be kind of funny if I am proven wrong and this comes out on Thursday. <laughs> but, like I said, internet seems to be doing well this week, so this episode definitely will come out on Thursday for sure. It's leaps and bounds faster than it was last week. Okay, uh, everyone, I think that's it for this week. Make sure to leave a like and comment on each video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hoagies and Pierogies is available on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Follow us on TikTok and Instagram for clips throughout the week. And we'll leave you with this. Uh, munch, 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 munch. Cheers. <laughs> Is he going to chug that whole thing? All right, all right. Oh, Only half of it. Cabrons with nothing. But. Got it. Takes me three hours. That's beautiful. A diamond would be insane. Wait, no, we don't have that. Actually, we do. I'm different. I'm different. Damn. Tell me how you're feeling with this table. It feels great. Uh, I love Jesus, and uh, I'm feeling great. Let's talk about Devin Haney. What are your thoughts on him? He slept with B. Diddy. He had massive sex with him.